even if it's White's turn. I believe the prompt was from White's uh, point of view. Um, and it, no, the prompt was can White win? The answer is no, but even when you make it White's turn, that's not super obvious. Can you save it with Rook B5? Um, so Rook B5 is interesting because you're cutting off the king. Kind of. Um, but what if I just play H6? Also, it's White's turn. So Daniel and I debated here. Uh, Daniel, his instinct was to play G5, and my instinct was to play H6. Um, and Daniel's thinking was that he thought it looked stupid to put the king in front of the pawns. Um, so those are the main things to consider. Like, am I going to play h6 or am I going to play g5? Um, my thinking behind h6 was that I'm going forward, you know, and I kind of need king support anyway to promote my pawns. But it, it, we couldn't figure out how the fuck black holds in either position for a while, um, it, it looks pretty pretty hard. Yeah, there's ideas of, you know, separating the pawns and then giving check and taking one. So we already know what the answer is. Black can't hold, but how? This is like a cal calculation exercise now. So, so we'll start with g5. Surprising to me that white can't win because I would 100% lose this with black. Well, you won't now. Now you'll know. As long as your rook is on the first rank or the second rank, it doesn't matter where your king is. Unless the pawns were like this, instead of like this. <laughs> so there was, there was, uh... My opponent needed to watch this prior to Tuesday. <laughs> You got you got like a rook ending like this. Uh, so king b three. I'm gonna go g six because if you keep moving in the most optimal way, I might promote with a check. And this is where it's like this is this is number one. I okay. I think you mean rook g one, right? Rook g one. Zug swing. If I, you know, I push this, you take. If I push this, you take. And if I go king h3, then uh, white is actually losing. Okay, so what if h6? Um, the rook has to be on the first or second rank, because otherwise, when it gets behind the pawns, it will be harassed by the king. And you will lose tempi. Uh, and there's like this this I, this defensive idea that doesn't work otherwise. But basically, you think rook g one is important after h seven? If h six rook takes g six, h seven rook g one. Yes, exactly. That's one of the ideas. So here, though, it's not so easy. Because if you go rook g1 here, I will go king h5. Rook h1, king g4. And the line that we kept calculating in our heads was this one. And then we kept giving up. Or not giving up, but... Well, at first, at first I was like, no, this is totally fine. Because even in this scenario, I have rook f1 here. And then you will have to step in front of your, your queen. And then I have rook g1. But I promote with check. So I saw that, and then I was like, okay, fuck, that doesn't work. But actually, we were just forgetting the key defensive idea in all of these positions. And by forgetting, I mean we were just learning it. But this is extremely simple in this position. Uh, the move for black. Looks hopeless, but... Yes. Rook h5. Great move to throw in, because this way... That shit's not happening. If you go here, you can't push because I have this move. If you go back, I take. If you do anything, I take. Um, and if you go here... Then what? 
The pawns are on the third rank, so they should be unstoppable, but actually the evaluation has changed a lot now. So rook takes h6, secures a draw, because if I push you have rook g6, otherwise you just take. But actually black is winning now. Well, black is winning now because our king is super, super close. Yeah, just bring the king in, when in doubt. And now my my king's not even helping you, helping my uh, helping my pawns. So if g7 important, sort of. Like if my king were over here, black would be lost. Because they wouldn't have rook g5. But I just I just simply have king f7. Um, and if h7. Same thing. I go king f6, and you can't promote both pawns. Um, however, if my king were over here, white's winning. Because even if I play like rook h6, g7, and then queen versus rook is winning uh, with, with technique. So we were missing uh, rook h5 check like as a throw-in. That's why we were so confused, so it took us a lot longer than it should have, but we were calculating it from the beginning. Um... What else? Uh, if h6, now we will look at, and this was a whole nother thing. Uh, multiple moves are good here, actually. I kept trying to bring my king in at first, because it just seems natural to do so. But then I thought, like, if, ki if, if, it, if it don't matter where king is, why move king? You know, like, based on the rule. Um, which led me to rook h1. King b3 is also a draw, but rook h1 is, is good enough. So king g5, and um, the thing is, like, I have to bring my king in now. I have to. I, I don't have another move. Um, king g6, king c4. And then this could become similar at some point. Um, like if we do this, it's it's like a worse version. I think. For white, I mean it's a worse version. It's less tricky. Yeah, king's moving on diagonals is broken, as as they say. You know, you know, uh you know how it goes, like to get to this square, it's the same number of moves to go like this than it is to do that. Same thing with that square and that square. Like if you were here. It's the same. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. Chessboards are hard. Anyway, that was one of the problems. It hurt my brain. Because I had done um, like two hours of, of just like grinding opening shit before this. So I don't want to hear it about why I was hanging pieces so much today. I'm, I'm all done. I'm all done. Think today. Think tomorrow.